you will not be the same. I encourage you, text six people, e-blast them, get on your cell phones. You know how we do it. Let them know that the author speaks is on. We'll be right back. Baby Stanley, I just want to thank you for buying my comic book. I really enjoyed putting things together, but you know it was a lot of hard work. I think it was worth it. I hope you like my theme song. Many thanks to Jess Will for lending their talent. There's a war going on, but some boys is here, the mighty immortals. They taking over this year. So stand clear, no worries, no fear, but no drama can stop us when the Almighty is near. Just try me, it's clear. And the voice that you hear is the sounds of many waters in your ear. And this here is the theme song To show your cats how we roll and that the team's strong The message, look deep beside the folds Read and understand my plans The mighty immortals right in the palm of your hands You know what, I wanted, th this is a very special broadcast today. The purpose of the author speaks, journalists, poets, book authors, uh, film producers, all on this platform for one purpose, to give you an opportunity to hear their challenges, their achievements, their accomplishments, all on camera. A lot of times when you are watching a news show, and you see that anchor, oh my goodness, the makeup is perfect, everything is working. Do you know that there is a crew behind the scenes that's making that happen, down to dabbing the last little bit of sweat off the bra? Well, we brow, well, we don't have all of that here. We give it to you right up close and personal. But you often will see a solar dad. O'Brien walk away from that platform, a Katie Curry, or maybe a Maya Angelou, or even an Oprah, or guess what, even a prophetess S.B. Barbara Stone, walk away from the platform, and you may say, but how do you do that? I want to be able to do it. Well, you're going to find out how it happens today. The reason that this broadcast is so special today, and by the way, we're broadcasting from the Bean Scene, right in the Bean Scene 2. That's T-O-O. -O. The co-owner and partner is Linda Baker. Hey, Linda. Linda, Linda. We thank you so much for allowing us to use your facility. It allows us to take the walls off of the beam scene. We do uh, broadcasting from the beam scene on Mondays to make sure that you get this broadcast. This is now a bona fide broadcast programming of your Grace Media Network. Who would have thought it? I was safe, but I caught it, and here we are. And you know, I wanted to show you all. I couldn't wait to do this. I was caught up in the dialogue between this poet and this author. So why don't we just introduce you a little bit? Let's start with Miss Adams. You know, the history, let's talk about your voice. Your voice is so familiar to so many. We, we call you the princess of KMOJ. <laughs> and I know that they would agree with me. But walk down memory lane and tell the folks how you even got into broadcasting. 24, 25 years, and look at her, just gorgeous. Here we go. I always like to write, and I love to read poetry. And I began to write poetry regularly in the early to mid-80s. And I met Maddie Clark. She's, um, she's in Church of God in Christ. And I was working at Walgreens at the time, and she came in the store, and um, I began to share some of my poetry with her. And she invited me to say a poem on her radio broadcast. And from there, more opportunities opened, and Maddie asked me to be a regular on her radio program. And I was just inspired to write more and more poetry, and I've just been running with the vision ever since the early 80s. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we could set our clocks to your voice and to your broadcast on KMOJ. We looked forward 
to hearing you. There was no voice like Daphne Adams. Do you remember how you would introduce that broadcast? Yes. Give them a taste of it. We're going down memory lane, okay? For about the first five years, my intro was words of inspiration, words that will encourage you, inspire you, and motivate you. And that was the heart of my ministry to encourage people because I realized that that's what it took to keep me going was encouragement. And like Psalms chapter, no, Samuel, first Samuel, I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. Chapter 30, verse 6 says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And I knew that's what it was going to take for God's people. And I did that through poetry, encouraging myself and encouraging others. Excellent, excellent. And here you are, over 20-something years later, and you're still on task. See, that, that, that's the thing. We may veer and go and do some other things, but it's something about passion. It's something about knowing you're gifted. You know it because you're comfortable, no matter how hard the task or the assignment is. It's something comfortable about it. You just, it's like a glove, a custom, a custom suit. It just fits right. And so here we are. Now, you are a published poet. Tell us about this. Uh, this assemblance of poetry. Okay. Um, I took a break from radio broadcasting the past two years so I could focus on the business side of my writings because I wanted to get my words into people's hands and to take time to slow down to focus on writing books, broadcasting, hosting the show. That took a lot of time and I appreciated that, but I had to take time to write this book and that's what Bishop Washington and I was discussing on Facebook take the time slow down and do it so you just said okay she gave us some dynamic points one more time take the time slow down and do it yes and one of the uh, the tags for your uh, one of our other broadcast programs Yig showcase rising stars is simply don't trip, just do it. <laughs> Don't trip, just do it. And um, I dedicate Youth Avenue to the memory of Therese Blair, a young mother who uh, was attending the University of Minnesota. She was murdered. And uh, we said never again on our watch were we going to lose a rising star. So that's why these broadcast programs are so important. We want to make sure that you get the encouragement, you get the up close and personal, whether you are in Dallas, whether you are in Israel, whether you're in Egypt, London, or whether you're right in the community of Minnesota. You've got something that will speak volumes into your life. And guess what? You get it on demand. You can keep going back and forth to this chronicle to get it right. You can even contact these individuals personally to talk with them and allow that connection to go wherever it is ordained to go. So here you are with this poetry. Would you read something out of the book? Yes, I All right. Hold on to your dreams. When man falls into a deep sleep, his dreams are often sweet. His earnest expectation comes true. He dream of a day brand new. He dream of a wonderful start. He receive the desires of his heart. Eventually the dream comes to an end and it's time to awaken again. He realized it was only a dream when he arrived. It was only a dream. How real it seemed. His heart is somewhat pricked. He says, by a dream, I was tricked. I guess if you ponder on a certain thing long enough, dreams it brings. According to the circumstance, I don't have a winning chance. It was only a dream, it is often said. There's no change for me ahead. When will men awake and say my dreams by faith I take? Some dreams are given to inspire and uplift. Dreams are a special gift. Some dreams are prophetically given to encourage man to grasp a vision. 
So when you have a dream, don't say, it was only a dream, I'll cast it away. Though the dream seems so far away like the stars, a change is sometimes nearer than it seems. So hold on to your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know something? I'm getting ready to do something that I know you weren't prepared for. Let me do a break here. This is Task, the author speaks. We are broadcasting from the Bean Scene 2 in North Minneapolis on the corner of Emerson and Broadway. Listen, mm, Linda Baker is the co-owner and also partner. So, you know what? We want you to stop by. It's the best coffee. Come on, it's the best tea. I always get my jasmine tea, and today I'm trying something different. Green tea and mango. It's the outstanding place for you to have your meetings, but you know what? We want you to also know what better setting than the Bean Scene 2 to do the author speaks and to bring it to you live, simply because you can read the books from many of these authors right here. We're going to make that happen just for you. All right, I'm going to switch on you guys. We didn't write this script, but the way this broadcast was birthed out, and that's why this is so monumental and history-making here at the Bean Scene, is that this broadcast was birthed out of my hearing the dialogue and reading the dialogue on Facebook between Miss Daphne Adams and Bishop Washington, who is a published author. And they were talking about book writing and all of this. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to allow you to have an opportunity to hear them dialogue. Daphne is now the host of The Author Speaks. She's going to interview Bishop Washington. We're going to take it from there. You know what? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I introduce to you none other than Tass, The Author Speaks, Daphne Adams, and our, her special guest, Bishop Fred W. Washington. You've got the floor. Bishop Washington is not only an eloquent speaker, but he's also an eloquent writer. He has the gift to put words together to encourage, motivate, and inspire. And myself, as I would say, not boastfully but humbly, I'm a gifted writer myself, and when I see the talent in someone else, I like to encourage them. So I was reading his writings pretty regularly that he would post on Facebook, and so the one that he posted on August 2nd, I just couldn't help but mention to him that I see you're a writer. Have you published a book before? Right, and I explained to her I have never really published a book of my own. There was a book written by Dr. Arthur Wright, which I was the subject of that book, God's New Covenant, The Man and the Mission. It was a biographical novel about my life. I wrote poems when I was a young man growing up in Louisiana in the church, and I always wanted to write a book, but I had never taken the time to write a book, and I explained that to Ms. Daphne Adams on that night. And I feel I have a couple books on the inside of me, but I have never just stopped to write those books. And so she encouraged me to take the time and write the book because she felt the book was inside of me. And Prophetess S.B. Stoller <laughs> happened to see that, and she sent a message and said, yes, the book shall be published. It will be completed and published, and it is so. And so from that, we were invited to be part of this broadcast. And I, I wish to take this time an opportunity to thank you, Prophet Stalin, for giving us this opportunity to share this. And I always have admired Miss Daphne Adams. I listened to her for many years on the television and on the radio. And so when I had the opportunity to meet her in person, and since that time we have invited her and she has spoken in our church and she's a dynamic speaker mm -hmm. also in addition to being a great writer and author. So I just thank God for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And as I mentioned previously about the commitment of time, dedication, even social life that it took for me to maintain my radio broadcast for over 20 years. I posted words of inspiration and it was a lot of commitment and so now my commitment has shifted to 
getting my words on paper, in bookstores, online, in people's hands. So when I meet people that say, um, I used to hear you on the radio, or you're not on there anymore, are you? I say, no, but I publish your book. I have a website. And um, I'm accomplishing my goal to get my writings in their hands. And it's the same way it took commitment, dedication, sacrificing of time to keep the radio program afloat. It takes the same commitment to publish a book. It is um, an extreme dedication when you have a goal because time can slip by you so quickly. So what I did when I worked on this book, A Poem a Day Keeps Discouragement Away, I had a goal of finishing a poem once a week. And so that's what I was encouraging Bishop Washington to do with his busy schedule. Maybe he can outline a schedule of a commitment of maybe an hour a week to work on that project. Well, I will take your advice and I will do that because I really do believe that I have something to say. I was talking to a lady and she said, Many times she read a lot of books, but there are not a lot of books on how to. And so that's what was down on the inside of me to talk to people about how to do things for God, how to live successful Christian lives, and many things of that nature. So I believe I can take the time out of my busy schedule, which is very busy, but I will do that to make that commitment. So I'm going to take my time, slow down, and do it. So I thank you for that question. Oh, yes. You're welcome. And there is, um, back in the early 80s, I used to publish our church's newsletter. And having a typewriter, not being able to save or edit anything, literally cutting and pasting clip art on paper, taking it down to Insta Prince. But the opportunities and the resources for authors and writers and editors and publishers, it's just vast. So we can take opportunity of this electronic age, save your files, what you're working on, that makes a big difference using clip art and graphics. It's, it's just easier and faster in the 2000s than it used to be. You got an opportunity to hear them up close and personal. See, all I did was speak it. All I did was open up my mouth. I know I'm talking to somebody. All I did was just open up my mouth and say what I believed I was hearing God say. And look at this today. So what? You make a mistake. So what? It doesn't go quite like what you're seeing. Do it. Mm. Just do it. It's just that simple. Just do it. I've got to jump in here. We're talking about the Bishop of Minnesota's Church of God in Christ. Jurisdictional Ecclesiastical Church of God in Christ. He's overseeing many churches. You get to see a different side of this man. Wow. But yet, you are allowing your gifting to come out, and you're writing. What caught me about your book, and the title of that book is... God's New Covenant. God's New Covenant. The Man and the Mission. The Man and the Mission. But here's what got me. Ladies, 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 ladies. As I was reading it, I laughed, and I, I actually cried. Because I wanted young people to read this book. He was not in ministry when he went into the military. He was not married, but nevertheless, ministry was birthed out of him while he was in the military. Met the love of his life, who he has been married and betrothed to for how long? 41 years. 41 years. But see, you can listen to all the hip-hop music, the latest this, that, and the other. Uh, you can reminisce about how to say it and how to do it. But this was a couple that when you read that book, they maintain a relationship by uh, letter, pen pound, and the love of his life. It is fascinating. You better get your hands on it before you say, I do. <laughs> so you don't have to say, I won't. <laughs> 
you can read about how a single man can court a young lady in a godly manner, but nevertheless have a rich, fulfilling life. It wasn't picture perfect. Give them a couple of the challenges, but nevertheless. But see, we can't tell you everything because it could turn into a movie. So, <laughs> but dating, waiting on God to meet your mate, whether you're 16, 18, 25, 35, 45, it don't make no difference. He successfully did this. Talk to that camera for a moment and just let them know a little bit of what was going on. You can just take a few minutes and you're going to do a real quick speed through it. Went into the military. Didn't know you were going to be a preacher. Didn't know you were going to be her. And a lot, of course, Mary. And now here you are, Bishop. And now here you are, book author. My, 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 my. I can't say it like you can. Try it. <laughs> oh, man. Let me see if I can say this in a few minutes. I, I want to first thank God for what he has done in my life. Uh, as she was stating, I didn't know what God had for me to do. I had grown up in Louisiana. I was in the military. And I was stationed in Vietnam. And I got a letter. I used to write an article for the Banner Street newspaper. And I was a youth columnist. And so the editor put in the paper that Minister Washington was in Vietnam, so asked all the young people to write to me. So anyway, this one young lady wrote to me, and she sent me a list of her friends and said, they will write to you. And I went down that list. I said, I can't write 25 people. I'm in a combat zone. So I picked one name out of that list, and that name was Barbara Jean Cotton. And I wrote to her, and she wrote me back, and we wrote like that. And the rest of the time I was in Vietnam. So that was in 1966. So 1967, I met her for the first time personally. And after we had talked about 18 days, I posted to her. And I uh, went back into the military, served out my time. I came to Minnesota in 1968, and I married her. And we've been married for 41 years. So God has a plan for our lives. He has a purpose for our lives. If we just yield ourselves to God and let God direct us, God will bring us to where he wants us to get to. And I never would have dreamed that I would be in Minnesota, that I would be married to a woman from Minnesota, that I would be a pastor of the New Covenant Church of God in Christ, or the bishop of the Minnesota jurisdiction. But I can say that if we live for God and do what God tells us to do, God will bring his plan into our lives and then we can fulfill the divine purpose that God has for us. You know, um, it amazes me how you're watching the author speaks. The acronym is TABS. And we're on site at the Bean Scene in North Minneapolis at Broadway and Emerson. Best coffee, best tea. She does catering, sandwiches, host your meetings here. Read about these authors right here. Internet access so you can get right online and go right to gmnlive.com and there it is. But as Bishop Washington was sharing his walk back down memory lane, that same twinkle and that same compassion as he was talking about his wife is still there. <laughs> and that's why I want you to read his book, get his book, and uh, you won't be the same. But I also encourage you, these are Facebook friends, so we want to say hello to our Facebook friends. Contact these folks. Hit them up on Facebook. Ask those questions. You won't be the same. Now listen, we're at the Bean Scene, and you know what? Um, I hope I have your, your permission. We're just going to throw the camera around over here. Not only are there guests at the Bean Scene here and they're enjoying the coffee, but guess what? On the Office speak set at the Bean Scene, over in the corner is Councilman. Don Samuels. So we're not going to disturb him, but you know what? He won the he won the re-election, and so hats off to him. But just to give you a sense of who comes through the doors of the Bean Sane. So here we are. The author speaks. I always say the author has the last words. So I would like to allow, as we come out of this edition of The Author Speaks, with our special guest, 
I call you the architects <laughs> or the inspiration behind and why the author speaks even came into fruition. Oh my, my, my. Keep on doing what you're doing. See, you never know who's watching your life. <laughs> you never know where it might end up. This is worth talking about and celebrating. We'll never forget this moment. But the author always has the last word. Our special guest today is none other than Daphne Adams. Her book, her poetry is A Poem A Day. You'll see her website. Everything is right there. You won't have to struggle over remembering any of this. You see Bishop Washington's book, etc. Bishop Fred W. Washington. They have the last say. Bishop Washington, address the camera as we're closing out. And Miss Daphne Adams as an author. You have the last word. I just wish to take this opportunity to thank Prophet Stone for this opportunity to share this broadcast with you all today. And we trust that you have been inspired and blessed by our words and we will be able to you with you. Thank you. I'm Daphne Adams, and I just enjoyed being here today at the Being Scene. I would like to thank the managers here. Thank you, the Prophetess Stallings, and the cameraman, her husband, Charles Stallings. It's just been wonderful. Please visit me at www.daphneadams.com. God bless you.